What's going on guys, Jordan here. And I kind of wanted to just tell you guys a little bit about my story and you know how I discovered Odds Jam and, and the success that I've had um, since starting. So I finished school in May and my whole plan was to go into property development with my dad. I went to school in Indiana and I'm from LA. So came back home, had you know all intentions to do it. And, and kind of with the current state of where the housing market was and it being pretty inflated and stuff, my dad was a little you know unsure about what he wanted to do if he wanted to buy any properties or, or you know any of that stuff so I was kind of left and I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and I remember talking to a friend of mine from school about Odds Jam you know he had used it in spring of 2022 I believe. And and he was telling me about the success that he had and all this money he made. And I thought, you know what? I love sports betting. I love making money, obviously. Let me give this a shot. And so I did a ton of research. I watched a ton of the videos. And and mind you, this is around May. And I said, screw it. I'm gonna make a snap call and I'm gonna move out to Arizona, which is the closest legal betting state to California. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for it. And in early August, I packed all my stuff up, moved out to Arizona and, and pretty much had the intention of doing this full time as my living, uh, just making bets, making money and, and having a good time. And it, it really couldn't have started any better, you know, right away with right away when I got here, I knew like I couldn't take a day off because I knew that if I wanted to have success, I was going to have to sports bet or I wouldn't be making any money. So right away when I came out here, I registered for all the sports books. I can kind of show you guys which ones we have out here, but we have, so here's the whole list. At the time we also had uh, Fubo, but since since I started, they, they closed, so no more. But I signed up for all of them, took advantage of all of the first deposit bonuses, which gave me a really nice buffer on my initial bankroll. I started with $3,000. You know, I didn't start with this like crazy $25,000, $50,000 bankroll. I started with a, with a modest 3K, which, you know, by no means is very impressive. And I kind of just went for it. Okay, at the time, you know, baseball was pretty much the only sport that was going on. I was just betting it. And I really didn't have like a direction. You know, I didn't know where I wanted, like what I wanted to do, the end goal of all this, but I knew that it could be fun. And if I could make a living from this, that, you know, that would be an amazing way to, to live. And in my first month, I, I absolutely killed it. I think I made about $6,000. And from there, I just kind of hit the ground running. I had a lot of confidence with pretty much what I was buying my what I was buying into. You know, I had sports bet in the past, but I was just kind of your typical novice gambler. You know, I liked overs. I liked parlays. I liked favorite money lines. I kind of liked everything now that I realized was terrible. And I was losing money, you know, but I, I still enjoyed it. And I knew that one, I knew about Odd Jam and I knew that you could have success with it because like I said, my friend had already had success. And I also knew that I couldn't keep on going in that direction or I would be in trouble financially. So I made the call and I decided to just start doing this. And um, like I said, in, in my first month, I made about six grand. In my third month, I think I, I netted $8,500. And mind you, this was still off of that 3K bankroll. You know, some days I would bet more than 3K, but all of my bet sizes were based off of $3,000, okay? So, you know, it wasn't like, I was. I, I still to this day, I've never really made these like, you know, $200 bets, $250 bets. I kind of sit in that like 100 to $150 range. And I've had a ton of success with it. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys uh, today kind of how I've had success and, and using Odd Jam and, and becoming a sharp sports better. So obviously the EV page is the most popular page on the site. Um, this is where I spend the majority of my time. Pretty much just to explain it to you, the e the percentage right here is the EV percentage, also known as the profit margin. Um, this is pretty much what your expected ROI is in the long run on a bet like this. So if you look at something like this and you see where everything is sitting, you know, plus 105, plus 100, plus 102, all, all this stuff, and you're getting at plus 125, that means that your ROI or your return on a bet like this in the long run will be 4.25%. The beauty about sports betting is, you know, if you go to a stock market, right, if you put $1,000 in the stock market and, and, and you make a 10% ROI, you're, you have a 10% ROI on the year, that's like, oh, that's phenomenal, right? That's $100 in profit because your money just sits there. It doesn't, you don't roll it over, you don't compound it, you don't do any of this stuff. In sports betting, you get your money back every single day. So if I had a, let's call it a 3% ROI. If I had a 3% ROI and I bet $3,000 every day for a month, which was my bankroll uh, and what I was willing to wager every single day, that would be a 90% return on a 3% bankroll. All of these plays at this, like right now, you know, it's about three o'clock my time and, and the games, you know, NBA doesn't start for an hour or so and, and MLB, you know, a lot of games have already started. There's all these plays that are higher than 3% ROI. So you should be 
able to still make over that. But I'm just saying, if you wanted to be, you know, conservative with your number, 3% ROI rollover every single day is a 90% return on your bankroll. You can't make that anywhere else. You can't make that in the stock market. You can't make that anywhere else. And, and this is, you know, it's sports betting, it's gambling. It's, you know, it has this like stigma that there's no way to beat it. The only way that I've figured out, and I, you know, I'm glad I learned this now and not, you know, 10 years from now when I'm, I'm broke from gambling is that the way to beat sports betting is with math and, and with odds. So we talked about this. Um, the recommended bet size is just, you know, you input your bankroll and it shows you how much they think you should be putting on a bet like this. Um, here are the odds, like I showed you before. You click on this and it shows you all the odds from all the sports books that are offering this line. You know, you, like I said, you can see where the discrepancy is, right? If we're all sitting in that like plus 100 to plus 105 range, we got plus 125 right here. That's really solid. The no VIG odds, which are right here is pretty much. So the VIG is the only, the VIG is the, is the house edge that the, that the sports books have. It's essentially like a convenience fee that they take for allowing you to place a sports bet. Well, the reason why sports betting is beatable and the beauty of it is it's the only form of gambling and correct me if I'm wrong. Wrong, but it's, I think it's the only sport form of gambling where the house edge isn't fixed into the game, but it's fixed into the odds. And what I mean by that is you look at a game like roulette. Okay. If you're playing double zero roulette, that means there's 38 numbers out there. But if you hit, you know, a number, I believe it's 35 to one payout. So there's no way around that. It is unbeatable which is why they love when people play it because the house will win a ton in the long run. But sports betting, because every sports book has the right to set their odds differently, there's ways around that VIG, that edge that they have. And if you're able to eliminate that VIG and the no VIG odds are lower than the odds you can get it at or like better value than the odds you can get it. Sorry, if the odds you can get it at is better value than the no VIG fair odds, as you can see, plus 125 versus plus 115, then it's a profitable bet. And the last thing to look at is market width. Market width pretty much just shows the confidence that sports books have in a certain bet. Usually the lower the odds, the lower the market width, um, main market. So we're talking money lines, spreads, over-unders are all going to have a lower market width just because the odds are going to be tighter than player prop, for example. You know, player prop, sometimes you'll see where every book is, is at a different line. There, there's a ton of disagreement, but there's also a ton of, there, there's a lot less action on those. So the lines just aren't as sharp as uh, main market. So so pretty much now that I explained every little feature of the EV page, um, we can just look at plays. I mean, you know, the thing here, so the lines move. That's the thing with a market like this with sports betting, unlike the stock market where it's open from, you know, nine to four and it's closed after that, you can't do anything. With the sports betting market, it is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year round. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're looking at 2 a.m., 7 a.m., regardless of when you're looking, there are going to be new lines that are popping up on, on, you know, on any sport, whether it's tennis baseball, basketball, hockey, football, it doesn't matter. There's always lines getting, there's always lines changing at any time of the day because the market never closes. So pretty much what I do is I, I just scroll here and I just look at high value plays. Often when it comes to player props, I like to kind of hang in 2% and above just because, you know, player props aren't as sharp of a market. So I like to give myself a little bit of a, I guess you could call it a cushion. But when it comes to main market, I will play it as low as I can. I mean, I will play it to 0.01% type of thing because the thing with main market, like I said, the lines are so sharp. So if any edge you can find is, is you know, very solid. And I've noticed that, you know, these, these main market lines, you're almost betting on line movement versus the actual odds that you're getting it at. Obviously you can use data to kind of determine where that line is heading. You know, if certain books are very much favoring one side, you get at minus 110, but that's, that's pretty much what it is. I'm, I'm almost betting on line movement using odds to help me determine where that line is moving. Uh, so that's pretty much the EV page. Um, the arbitrage page is also a great tool, not only just to find EV bets, but also uh, not sorry, not just to arbitrage, but also to find EV bets. So right now you can see there's a lot of soccer discrepancies between my book and Barstool. We can look at the top one, for example, Jeffrey Schlupp. Uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but we'll act like I am. You can see here, right? You can take his over one and a half shots attempted at plus 255 on my bookie and minus 190 on barstool when it comes to arbitrage betting the only thing you need to know is that if the plus number is a bigger number than the minus number then you have an arbitrage opportunity so right here if i were to put a hundred dollars on this okay then they would suggest using the arbitrage calculator that if you put 232 and 59 cents on uh this guy you know uh under one and a half shots attempt then you're gonna profit 22 dollars 22 dollars and 41 cents 
that is risk-free money. That's that's it. You know, you found an, an arbitrage opportunity and you just made a free $22 just by placing a couple bets, just by clicking a couple buttons. Simple as that. But like I said, there's also great opportunities to find EV bets. Um, so I usually like to start at the EV page. Then I go to the ARB page. Then I go to the low hold page. And pretty much the low hold page is designed to help you with your um, your rollover bonuses. So often on um, sports books, you know, it'll have like a, a certain playthrough amount and and you have to exhaust that before you can actually withdraw your money. So what you're doing is you're finding lines where they actually balance each other out. Um, you could see right here, if I were to take A's, Gray's uh, over under two and a half runs first three innings, I can take the over on Caesars. Let's say I put a hundred bucks on it and I can take the under on MGM and put 120 on it. And I'm bound, I'm not going to lose any money. I'm not making any money, but it's helping me get through those bonuses. Also build up rewards with those books, you know, build up those free bets, build up those, I don't know, deposit matches. You know, there's a ton of other rewards that go into it. I know Caesars, like if you get to a certain level, you get a free trip to like the Bahamas or something, you get a lot of uh, really good rewards. Um, but what I also like to do in the low hold page is I like to look up, I like to look at Pinnacle. Okay, Pinnacle is known as one of the sharpest books in the world, especially when it comes to main market. And I like to filter it to exclude player props. And I just like to see if there's any books that just like are pretty much opposites of, of Pinnacle. So I'll look at this, right? And this is for tomorrow, but it's Brewers, Cardinals, Brewers, Cardinals, and, and I'm taking Brewers money line. You can see right now we're grabbing Brewers money line at plus 125. It's a direct low hole to Pinnacle. And you can kind of see where the market is. You know, FanDuel is already, already moving towards the Brewers. The rest of the books are kind of in this like minus 118 to minus 120 range. We're grabbing a, a plus one, or sorry, plus 118 to plus 120 range. We're at plus 125. You know, you might think, oh, that's like a seven cent edge like or a difference. That's not that big of a deal. But that's the difference between profiting on a sport, like profiting on sports betting in the long run and not. You know, if you think about it, right, if, if a minus 110, so pretty much in sports betting, right, on an over under or spread, the line is going to be or the odds are going to be minus 110 on both sides. That means that there's a 50% chance of that bet hitting, but you're getting it not for one to one, you're getting minus 110. So you have to win at a 52 point, I forget the exact number, but a 52 point something percent clip just to break even. So by getting Getting a seven cent edge is really big on a play like this, especially when you're seeing, you know, Pinnacle already moving towards um, the Brewers, FanDuel also moving towards the Brewers, two very credible sports books. So I like to do that with a lot of them. Here's a great example of one that I would take all day, every day. Uh, Magic Nets, minus 110 on Caesars, direct low hold to Pinnacle. And this is kind of what I was talking about with the markets being so sharp, is that you can use the data points from all these books. See that the difference is all of these US books are taking a lot more VIG than Pinnacle. Pinnacle is like, 3% vigor. So these books, I mean, that's, if you wanted to, we could actually look and see what kind of vig these books are taking on a bet like that. Okay. So at 217 and a half, we're Caesars 4.8%. That's kind of your standard. Pinnacles at 3.4. Win bets at nine. DraftKings 6.9, uh, Barstool 4.8. You know, like we're looking at this, it's a lot of VIG. So it kind of throws off the numbers. But if you use Pinnacle with a much lower VIG, you can get a good idea of kind of the direction of where this bet is going. Click into it, you see, okay, a lot of books are already at a half a point higher with some books already favoring the over. No book is even favoring the under at a half a point higher. We're grabbing it for minus 110. That's why I like to use the low hold page. It kind of just filters it a little bit. You can kind of just look at one book versus another. It's a little bit easier. The last thing that I use, because I, I love doing the DFS, I love doing price picks, underdog, is this new, you know, this new fantasy screen that was just introduced. It's so cool. It's pretty much, once it loads, I'll show you. Um, okay, perfect. So pretty much price picks has if you, the ideal entry for a price picks entry is five or six legs because the implied odds are minus 119 which means that you have to hit at above 42 point i think it's two three percent or something in that range um in order to profit so all you're trying to do is you're trying to find plays that have a higher expected hit rate than that 42 and change percent trey murphy great example this has a percentage like odds to hit at 55.75 percent pinnacle loves it DraftKings loves it uh, season Caesars loves it, loves it. And MGM is favoring the over at minus 125, but clearly not as much. But honestly, if you guys have ever used MGM and and has se have seen it on Odds Jam, you guys know that MGM is not the sharpest book in the world.
Okay, we can look at this also. Lane Thomas, over half a run. Uh, or sorry, under half a run. It's a 55.25% hit rate. MGM minus, I mean, all three of these books are all in the minus 140s. That's that's a huge advantage. You know, that's how you find profitable plays with um, price picks. If you were to just go, I mean, imagine you have the option to take the under on these two. Imagine taking the under or you took over, over a run, over half a run on Lane Thomas. You'd be getting terrible odds versus if you took it on a normal sports book because they're fixed odds. So it's going to be minus 190 on whether you take the over or you take the under. So this is pretty much how I've done it. You know, there's, it's really not that difficult. I'm by no means a math guy. Uh, I was never really a math guy or at least like at a high level. Um, you know, I can obviously do your basic arithmetic and all that stuff, but, but by no means am I a math guy. Um, I did not study math in college or anything like that, but this is different because it's applicable. You know, I enjoy sports betting. So I actually enjoy figuring out kind of the odds and, and, and realizing what, you know, the mindset of these sports books are when they're setting lines, how odds correlate with probability, that there's so much that goes into it. So kind of to sum everything up, the three pages that I use the most are going to be the EV page, the low hold page, and the arbitrage page, and also the screen page for DFS. So that is price picks, underdog, jock market, parlay play, um, all of those types of books. That's about it, guys. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, please comment them down below. Um, you know, I I'm more than happy to answer any of your guys' questions about um, maybe if you just started, like how you've been doing, or um, if you have any questions about uh, bankroll management or anything like that. So that's about it. Take it easy, guys.